Chapter 10, Function Operations. So the first part we're going to go over is a little bit of review. And then we're going to go into adding and subtracting equations. So functions, prior skills. Evaluate the following expressions given the function below and write the corresponding ordered pair. So you need the x and y coordinate. So we have g of x equals negative 5x minus 3, f of x equals 2x squared plus 9, h of x equals 8 divided by 8 minus x, and j of x equals 2x plus 7. So if you have j of 2 of 3, so if, you, if you're given the value in the brackets, that's always the x value. So they're giving us technically in function notation x equals 2 thirds. And they're asking us to find y. So, if I take j of x and I fill in for the x 2 thirds, I get 2 times 2 thirds plus 7. 2 times 2 thirds is 2 over 1. So, it's going to be 2 times 2 over 1 times 3, which is 4 over 3 plus 7. Then we have to get a common denominator. So, we're going to get 4 over 3 plus 7 times 3 is 21 over 3. 4 plus 21 is 25 over 3. So our x is 2 thirds and our y is 25 over 3. Now they're asking us to function g of x equals negative 13. So when it equals the value, then that means they gave you the y value. So we know y equals negative 13 and they're asking us to solve for x. This is from grade 10. Um, we used it in grade 11 as well. So if you take this value, negative 13, and you set g of x equal to it, which is what it says, g of x is 5 or negative 5x minus 3. So I can fill that in for the g of x, and it equals negative 13, and then you just solve for x. So this is g of x, and I put in for g of x this, and equals negative 13. Add the 3 over, and we get negative 5x equals negative 10, divide by negative 5, and x equals 2. So we're going to get 2 comma negative 13 as our ordered pair. h of negative 16, then that means that they gave you x, x equals negative 16, when it's filled in for the brackets. So we're going to use the h of x function, which is 8 divided by 8 minus x, and I'm going to fill negative 16 in for x, and solve for y. So I get 8 over 8 minus negative 16, which is 8 over 24, because it's minus and minus 16, which is actually plus. And 8 over 24 is 1 third. So that means my y is 1 third, and my x they gave me is negative 16. So my ordered pair is negative 16 and 1 third. They want us to find x if g of x equals 40 watts. So this is very much like this one up here, right here. It equals 40 watts. So I'm going to set g of x equal to negative 5x minus 3 equals 41. And then I'm going to um, add the 3 over. So I get negative 5x equals 41, divided by negative 5, and negative 44, sorry. So 41 plus 3 is 44, so you're going to get negative 44 over 5. Or 44 over negative 5. Or you could say negative out in front, 44 over 5, like this. Or you put the negative to the, to the base. Remember, these are all equivalent. So this ordered pair, that's going to be your x value, because we don't know our x. So negative 44 over 5 is 41. Instead of h of x, I'm going to make this be j of x. 
and say j of x equals negative 2. So in for j of x, I'm going to fill in 2x plus 7, because that's what j of x equals, and it equals negative 2. They gave me the y value, they're looking for the x. Minus 7, 2x equals negative 9, so x equals negative 9 over 2. So you get negative 9 over 2, and y is negative 2. And then this one, you're going to get h of x equals 2. So I'm going to plug that in for the h of x. Um, I'm going to have h of x here be 8 over 8 minus x equals 2. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the 8 minus x up, and multiply it, and divide by the 2. So I'm going to bring the 2 down and the 8 minus x up. So I'm going to get 8 over 2 equals 8 minus x. I just brought this up and brought this down. So now I have 4 equals 8 minus x. Subtract 8. And negative 4 equals negative x. So x equals 4. So x is 4 and y is 2. All right. Number two, translate the following statements into coordinate points and plot them. So remember, if it's in the brackets, it's x. If it's not in the brackets and it's equal to, it's y. So this coordinate would be negative 1 and 1. So I go to negative 1 on the x, positive 1 on the y, plot my point. It's in the brackets, so 2 is my x. f of 2 equals 7. 7 is my y. So my point is at 2 and 7. 2 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then 1 is my x, and negative 1 is my y, because if it's in brackets, it's x. So that's 1 and negative 1. So positive 1 and negative 1. And then f of 3 equals 0. 3 is my x. 0 is my y, so my coordinate is at 3, 0. So over 3, up none. Okay, is this a function? It is a function if it passes the vertical line test. So if you draw vertical lines through the whole graph, um, even if it's just coordinates, and you only pass through one at a time, then it's a function, which means that for every x, value there can only be one y value. And for x equals negative 1, I have 1. For x equals 1, I have negative 1. For x equals 2, I have 7. For x equals 3, I have 0. So for every x, there's only one y. It would pass the vertical line test, so it is it a function? Yes. Now, for given graphs, g of x and f of x, g of x is the half circle, it's like semicircle, and f of x is the kind of peaked line. Um, you have to take values from g when it's g of something, and you have to take values from the f graph when it's f of something. Now remember, if it's filled in for the brackets, it's x. So this f of negative 4 is asking you for what is the y value on the f graph when x equals negative 4. So I go to negative 4 on the f graph, go to negative 4 and follow it down, and then this is where it crosses on the f of x graph at negative 4. So what's my y value? Well, my y value is negative 2. So my answer is negative 2. did this in grade 10 as well. So then g of 0 means when x is 0 on the g graph, what is y? So when x is 0 on the g of x graph, I go to 0 and I follow it up and I plot it. When x is 0, y is 3. So my answer is 3. 
when g of 3 means when x is 3, what's y? And when x is 3, y is 0. And on the f graph when x is 3, I go to 3 on the x, follow it up to my, where my graph crosses, my y value is 5. x, when g of x equals 0, so this is no longer x, this is y. This is when y equals 0, what is x? When y equals 0, it's actually on two spots. That's a trick. When y equals 0, it's actually the x-axis. So when y equals 0, it's asking you for the x-intercept. Well, there's actually two of them. When y equals 0, x equals negative 3 and positive 3. Remember, we can write that as 1. We can say x equals plus or minus 3. And then for the f of x graph, when x equals 0, or sorry, when y equals 0, because they're asking you what x is, when y equals 0 is on the x-axis, it's actually asking you, a special way of asking you for the x-intercept, so it's when x equals 2, negative 2. So that's all review. Now we're going to lesson 10.1, sum and difference of functions. So it's when we take two functions or two equations and we add them or we subtract them. So first off, we're going to start with adding them. Example number one. Example one, for each pair of functions, determine h of x equals f of x plus g of x. Graph and label each function. Then state the domain and range of h of x. So. We're just going to look at this as the function um, when we add them together and we're going to plot the final function. Later on we'll look at each separate function and from if you're given actually the graphs of the functions and not the equations, how you would come up with the new graph. Okay, but right now we're just going to do equations added. So h of x equals f of x plus g of x. So in this case, h of x equals f of x, and f of x is the square root of x minus 4. So we just take f of x, throw it behind our shoulder, and replace it with the square root of x minus 4, plus sign. And then we fill in g of x. Take g of x, we hug it behind our shoulder, and we replace it with 12, because g of x equals 12. I can't make that any prettier, and I can't make that any simpler. I can't put a number, like 12, into a radical. So that's it. h of x equals this lovely function here. Well, from radical functions, which we just learned about, we know that the vertex is at 0, 0. We know that the, it starts at 0, 0. So we know that actually our transformations will give us the new vertex. So this, is, this graph is transformed 4 to the right and 12 up. So I know that it's going to start at 4 and 12. So because it's going to start at 4 and 12, I'm actually going to make this graph start lower down. And I'm going to make it have um, a y scale of 2. So I'm going to start the graph down here as my x-axis and mm, over here as my y-axis. And then I'm going to say x scale 1. That means every single line is going to count as 1. And I'm going to make my y scale be 2 so that every single little tick counts as 2. So this tick here, this first one here, would actually be 2, not 1. Okay, and you have to label your axes if you're going to change your scales or else I'm not going to know or anyone looking at it that um, you're actually counting those as twos. So, if we look at that equation on our graphing calculator, we can plug it in. We can go square root x minus 4 plus 12 and press graph. Now if we're on the basic 10, 10 window, you're not going to be able to see it. This graph starts at 4 and 12 up. Well, we're, we're at a 10 max, so we need to change our window. So I'm going to change our window to match the one we have. We start our x at negative 4, because remember each tick's worth, oh no, at negative 2, because each x tick's only worth 1. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we start at negative 2. And I'm making us go up to x max of 12 and a scale of 1. Now my y minimum is negative 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 
negative 10, so that stays. And my y max is at 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. And my y scale is at 2, so I'm going to make it be 2 so that it matches. All right, so once we have them pressed into our window and changed, we can press graph. So now this will show our graph should look like this one. So we go second, graph, get our table of values. We have errors all this way. Why do we have errors? Well, we have errors because x cannot be less than 4. Why is that? Because we have a square root sign. Remember from radicals? If we have a square root sign, we have to find out our restrictions. Under a radical, you can't have a negative number, so the smallest x value I can have is 4 or greater. 4 would make me have a radical um, a square root of 0, which is fine. But if I put in let's say 3, 3 minus 4 would give me negative 1, and that's not good. So we know that our x value has to be greater than 4, just from even our past information. So I know that my uh, starting of this graph is going to be at 4 and 12. So I'm going to go over 4 and up 6, because up 6 is actually up 12. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So I'm at 4 and 12. Then it's at 5 and 13, so halfway. And then I'm at, I'm going to pick the nice ones, 8 and 14. So that's 5, 6, 7, 8 and 14. And 13 and 15, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, we're off it. So I'm just going to keep it there. So that's going to be my sketch. Okay, I want the domain. So the domain of this function in set builder notation is going to be x such that x is greater than or equal to 4 x er. If I did an interval notation, you have a square bracket for equal to 4, comma, infinity, round bracket. There, a little better. Okay, and the range, the smallest my graph can be is 12. So it's going to be y such that y is greater than or equal to 12, because 12 is the value that corresponds with 4 for the x. So you have y er. And then for interval notation, you're going to have a square bracket, 12 to positive infinity, round bracket. All right. Now let's look at these ones. f of x plus g of x is h of x again. So I have h of x equals f of x plus g of x. So h of x, in this case, is two lines. And when you add two lines together, you're going to actually keep a line. So we get 2x plus 7 plus 5x minus 11, because I'm going to fill 2x plus 7 in for f of x, keep the plus sign, and fill 5x minus 11 in for g of x. Okay? So now I can collect like terms, not like the last one where I was stuck when I was done just filling it in. So 2x plus 5x is 7x. And then 7, positive 7 minus 11 is negative 4. Okay? So I'm just going to make it be in here. And I'm going to leave my scales be just one. So x scale, one, y scale, one. Um, if you wanted to, you could make them y scale be two as well. So um, we're going to start at negative four. And then we're going to go up 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, over 1. And we can connect those. Because you have rise over run. So you go up 7 and write 1. So because we get a line, that's not the straightest line I've ever drawn, but it's a straight line, imagine it. The domain is going to be x is an element of the reals in set builder notation, and in interval notation, negative infinity, positive infinity. The range is going to be y er 
and negative infinity, positive infinity. All right. Last one of these. So h of x equals f of x plus g of x. So in for f of x, you're going to fill in x squared minus 3x minus 2 plus g of x is x squared minus x plus 5. And when you take two quadratics and you add them, you get a quadratic. So let's combine like terms. x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. Negative 3x minus x, negative 4x. And then minus 2 plus 5, positive 3. So that's h of x. Now in order to draw a quadratic, you're going to want to have the vertex. And in order to give you a range, you're going to want to have the vertex. So we're going to graph it and see. So I'm going to go to y equals, and I'm going to type in my new function. 2x squared minus 4x plus 3. Press graph. And I'm going to make myself have a graph where very little of it is below. So I'm going to find the minimum. Left bound. See the little coordinates down here tell you where your little blinking blinker is. So if you don't know where it is, you can always look at the coordinates at the bottom. That will help you. Okay, enter, and then you need to be on the right-hand side of it. Enter, enter. And point nine 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 is 1. So 1 and 1. So our vertex is at 1 and 1. Now people might say, well, it doesn't look like it. Well, that's because I have this window weird. So if I go zoom 6 and set it back to my standard window, you'll see it actually is at 1 and 1. So then we're going to go second table, and we're going to look at values on both sides of 1 so that we can draw this parabola. So we have 0 and 3, and we have 2 and 3. And we have negative 1 and 9. 9. Well, that is not drawn where it's supposed to be. Love my smart board as usual. Oh my goodness. And then we have 3 and 9. I'm going to try those ones again because they're annoying me. Don't mind me, I forgot to turn off the recording. Isla, come say hi. Hi. Come closer. Okay. Say hi to everyone. Hi, everyone. Say, hope you have a happy new year. Hope you have a happy new year. My daughter, she gets to spend time with me while I do this. You guys should all be excited. Okay. So... We go negative 1 and 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh my goodness, <laughs> 3 and 9. Okay. Let's connect them. Oh my goodness. <laughs> now you guys understand because you know my smart board. But there you go. All right. So my domain is XER because it's a quadratic. or an interval notation, negative infinity, positive infinity. And your range is y such that y is greater than or equal to 1. Y, yeah. Or, oops, square bracket, 1 to infinity. Round bracket. All right. 
All right, for each of the following functions, determine h of x equals f of x minus g of x. Now, if before we had accidentally added g of x to f of x instead of f of x plus g of x, it wouldn't have mattered because you have an addition sign in between and it wouldn't matter. However, with subtraction, it extremely matters, so you need to pay close attention. 5x, f of x minus g of x, so you have to state f of x first not second. So this is more extremely important when you're doing subtraction that we do not mess up when we fill them in. So h of x equals f of x just 10 minus g of x which is the absolute value of x plus 3. Now we can't put anything together, right? So let's see what this even looks like. So we're going to go y equals clear and we're going to go 10 minus the absolute value you find by pressing math over the number and apps, number one, absolute value. So the absolute value of x plus 3. And if you have a fancy, fancy new calculator, that absolute doesn't stay as an abs. It actually goes to these nice straight lines for absolutes. Press graph, and you get yourself an absolute value function. Okay? Now, if I would have put them the other way around incorrectly, and I would have went the absolute value of x minus, minus x plus 3 minus 10, I would have actually gotten this graph. Totally different. So you can't do your um, subtractions in different orders. You will get it wrong. All right. Now we have h of x equals f of x, which is 2x minus 5 minus x plus 8. Now everyone writes it like this, you guys. Everyone writes it like that. You have to watch yourself. You're not subtracting x and adding 8. You're subtracting x plus 8. So you have to remember to put this in brackets so that you remember to subtract the whole thing. So if there's something that you're subtracting that has more than one term and you don't remember brackets, then you're not going to remember to distribute that subtraction sign and you're going to get it wrong. And as you know, that would be the top picked answer. It will be there on your diploma. They're not that nice. So we have 2x minus 5 minus x, and you distribute the negative 1, and you get minus 8. The plus 8 answer will be there, so make sure that you distribute that minus sign in. That's what you have to remember with subtraction. Now we collect like terms, so we get 2x minus x, which is just x, and then we get negative 5 minus 8, which is minus 13, and there you go. So we have h of x actually equals x minus 13. Now, if we take f of x minus g of x here, we're going to get h of x equals f of x, so f of x, which is x squared plus x plus h. You can put that in brackets, but it doesn't really matter, okay? The g of x matters, so we go minus 2x squared minus 3x. You have to remember to put that in brackets when it's more than one term. So now we're going to get x squared plus x plus 8 minus 2x squared plus 3x. Then we can collect like terms. So now we get negative 2x squared plus x squared, which is negative x squared. And then we get plus 3x plus x, which is plus 4x. And then plus 8 will be our answer. So that's what h of x equals. So we have this equals h of x. Now, h of x equals f of x minus g of x. g of x is x minus 2 squared. You cannot distribute this minus sign into this bracket here, this x minus 2 squared. You need to FOIL that out first. And remember to not write x squared minus 4. Remember, I always tell you, cross off that 2 and write it as x minus 2. And then put that in brackets so that I remember to distribute the negative into both of them. So I'm going to get h of x equals 4x minus 6 minus x squared minus 4x plus 4 when you distribute that in. So now we actually get h of x equals 4x min oh, minus 6 minus x squared 
it should be the negative end, My, uh, plus 4x minus 4. So now you're going to get h of x equals negative x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 8x minus 6 minus 4 minus 10. Example 3. Consider the functions f of x equals x plus 1 squared and g of x equals 3x. Determine the equation of the function. Now, if it's written like this, this f minus g of x, that is just the same as writing h of x equals f of x minus g of x. So if ever you see it like that, it's just minus. It's the exact same thing. And if there was a plus sign in between like this, then it would just be f of x plus g of x, okay? So I don't want that to throw you off. So we're going to get f of x, h of x equals f of x, which is x plus 1 squared minus g of x, which is 3x. Now if I forgot the brackets, it wouldn't be the end of the world for this one because there's a monomial, one term following after, so it wouldn't matter. Now, you have to expand that out, so we're going to get x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus 3x, because you have to foil the x plus 1 squared. And so you're going to get h of x equals x squared minus x plus 1. Okay? Sketch the graphs of f of x, g of x, and h of x on the same axes. So... If we want to do g of x, that one's easy. g of x is just 3x. It's just a line. So you can put the y-intercept as plus 0. So you're going to start at 0, and then you're going to go up 3, write 1. I start at 0, 0, and I'm going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, write 1. Up 3, 1, 2, 3, right 1. Or at 0, 0, I could have went down 3, left 1. It's the complete opposite. Down 3, left 1. And I'd have my g of x line. Now, to do f of x, now, to do f of x, You're going to turn on, you can push this into your calculator. x squared minus x plus 1. Press graph. And you know that your um, vertex is at negative 1. And zero for the original one. But for this one, it's changed because it's moved. Um, so we're going to have second trace minimum. This can be our h of x graph. And our h of x graph is going to have a vertex at 0.5 and 0.75. So we're just going to keep that in mind for a second. Now, I'm going to punch in that f of x, sorry, which was x, oops, x bracket, x plus 1 squared. This is that negative 1 and 0 is my vertex. Just based on the fact that your normal vertex for a quadratic for x squared, if it hasn't been moved, would be at 0, 0, right? Well, remember, this is a transformation. It's moved 1 to the left. So if you went from 0, 0, 1 to the left, it would be at negative 1, 0. I'm going to pick values on the opposite sides of negative 1. So I have negative 1, 0. I have 0 and 1. I have 1 and 4. I have... 
to a nine, but I think that goes off. Eight. Yeah, I'll plot it up here to a nine. And then I have negative two and one, negative three and four, and then negative four and nine. Now I could just go ahead and type into my calculator h of x, the x squared minus x plus 1, and plot it. But I'm going to show you how you can actually plot it from these two graphs. What we're doing is we're keeping the x value as what it is, and we're just going to add the y values. So at 0, I'm going to take, or sorry, we're going to subtract them. I'm going to take um, f, which is the red, and I'm going to subtract g, which is the blue. So if I start at 0, let's say, I'm going to take f, which is 1, and I'm going to subtract 0, g, which is 0. So 1 minus 0 is 0. It's going to stay here. So what I'm saying is, this is my x value, which is 0. Okay? My f of x, y value at that point is 1. My g of x, y value at that point is 0. So my f minus g is going to be 1 minus 0, which is 1. So my new point is going to actually be at 0 and 1. Now if I go to 1, my f of x is at 4. My g of x is at 3. 4 minus 3 is 1. So I'm going to be at 1. So I'm at 1 and 1. Now if I take my values in between here and I plot them, I'm actually going to find that at 0.5 and 0.75 I have a, so this is actually a vertex down here. Then if I take 2, my f of x is at 9, my g of x is at 6, and 9 minus 6 is 3. So I'm going to be at 2 and 3 now. And you can do the same with the other side. So if I go into my y equals and I put in my new function, which is x squared minus x plus 1, and I press graph, you're going to see that that's what you get. So if you have a second table, you can get negative 1 and 3 as well. And negative 1 and 3 comes from um, it makes sense because it's going to be 0 minus a minus 3. 0 minus a minus 3 down here, which is actually plus 3. So that's why you're getting this. So you're going to get a graph that looks like this. Okay? That's your h of x graph. So what's the domain in the range of h of x? Well, the domain of h of x is x er. The range, you'd have to find the minimum, and we did. It was at 0.75. So it's going to be y such that y is greater than or equal to 0.75. Y er. Example 4, example 5, then we have a practice the question left. So up until now, what I've given you is equations. You have to work them out. You can always punch them in your calculator and get the new graph. But what happens if they don't give me equations? What happens if they just give me two graphs and they ask me to do something with them? So that's going to be 5 and 6. We're going to look at example 4. So sometimes they can ask you to subtract them, but they can actually ask you for a value at it. So m of x is when f of x is minus g of x. So they're telling us to consider f of x equals x squared minus 7 and g of x equals 4x plus 5. Determine m, m of x equals f of x minus g of x. And then find m of 1. So what they want you to do is when you find whatever the heck m is, you fill 1 in for all the x's and get an answer. That's what they want. They want an answer. This is a perfect way to ask a numeric response. So f of x, so m of x equals f of x, which is x squared minus 7, minus 
4x plus 5. We need to put it in that bracket. So we're going to get x squared minus 7 minus 4x minus 5. So m of x equals x squared minus 4x minus 12 once you plug in that. Um, you collect your like terms of negative 7 and negative 5. But they don't want m of x. They want m of 1. 1 is an x. So all we do is we plug a 1 in. 1 squared minus 4 times 1 minus 12. So it's going to be 1 minus 16. So it's going to be negative 15. It's going to be your answer. Okay? Example 5 and example 6 are when you're given a graph and you have to come up with the new graph given the following operations. Or you could be actually just asked to find an answer. So in this case, you're just asked to find an answer. So example five, use the graphs of f of x and g of x to evaluate the following. So f of f plus g of four is what a is. Remember I told you not to leave it written like that? Always rewrite it as f of four plus g of four, or f of x plus g of x. Oops, four. So f of 4 means when, this is when we use the review stuff at the beginning. So when x is 4, what's y? So I'm going to go to x is 4, and I'm going to follow it up to f. So right here. So when x is 4, y is 1. So my answer is 1 for f of 4. And then g of 4, I'm going to go to 4 again, but I'm going to go up to the g function. And when f is, or when g has x equals 4, it has y equals 3. So g of 4 equals 3. So I'm just going to fill a 3 in, and my answer is going to be 4. 1 plus 3. Then f plus g of negative 1 is the same as f of negative 1 plus g of negative 1. So I'm going to go to negative 1 this time, and I'm going to follow it up to f, and it's going to be at 4. So f of negative 1 is 4. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to replace it with a 4. Plus g of negative 1. So negative 1 follow it up and it's at 2. So I'm going to replace it with a 2. 4 plus 2 is 6. Now this is where the big change comes in. So now I'm not going to give you an equation, but I want you to tell me what h of x is when you have f of x minus g of x. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go to the same x values on f and g, and I'm going to take f, and I'm going to subtract g. So I'm going to start at 0, because you can only go where the two graphs exist um, on the x. So I'm going to start at 0 first. I guess I could start at negative 1. So I have to do f minus g. So at negative 1, f is 4, and at negative 1, g is negative 5. So I'm going to be f minus g. So it's going to be 4 minus a minus 5, which is actually 9. So it would be somewhere up here, <laughs> way off. Then I'm going to start at 0. So that would be my new point at x. I start at 0. 0. f is going to be 3. G is going to be negative 4. So I have to do f minus g. So it's going to be 3 minus a minus 4, which is 12. No, nope, that's 7. I multiplied them. So it's somewhere up here, too. Then if I go to 1, f is 2, g is negative 3. 2 minus a minus 3 is 5. So we're getting a little closer to coming back into the graph. If I go to 2, f is 1, g is negative 2. 1 minus and minus 2 is 3. So now my new point's going to actually be at 3. And then if I go to 3, f is 0, g is negative 1. 0 minus minus 1 is 1. If I go to 4, f is negative 1, g is 0. Negative 1 minus 0 stays negative 1, so it's going to be here. And then if I go to 5, um, f is negative 2, g is 1, it's going to be negative 2 minus 1, so it's going to be at negative 3. 
So the x's are actually where my new graph is. And that is going to be h of x without me actually ever knowing what the functions of f of x and g of x are. Example 7. If h of x equals f of x plus g of x, so f of x plus g of x, and f of x equals 3x minus 4, determine g of x. Well, they give us h of x squared. They give us f, but we don't know g. So let's see if we can break this up. So we're going to fill it in. We have h of x equals f of x plus g of x. So let's fill in what we do know. h of x is x squared plus 5x minus 2 equals f of x, which is 3x minus 4, plus g of x. So we just want to know what g of x is. When we want to know what something is, we solve for it. So we're going to try and get g of x by itself. So we're going to subtract 3x, and we're going to add 4 to move them over. So now I'm going to get g of x equals x squared, 5x minus 3x is plus 2x, negative 2 plus 4 is positive 2, and that would be what g of x would have to be. Now we're going to do it again. So we get h of x equals f of x plus g of x. h of x is 2x squared minus 7x plus 4. It equals f of x, which is 3x minus 4 plus g of x. I want to get g of x by itself, so I'm going to subtract 3x and add 4 again. I'm going to get g of x equals 2x squared minus 10x plus 8. Then we have a practice exam question for you to try. So the graph of y equals f of x includes the points 2, 5, 4, 15, 7, and 30. The graph of g of x includes 2, 6, 3, 16, 4, 30. If f of x and g of x are defined for all real values of x, then which of the following points must lie on the graph of y equals f of x minus g of x? So technically what we're doing is we're doing f of x minus g of x. The only way we can compare them is to have the exact same x values and then subtract their y values. So you have to, the only way you can compare is same x values, subtract y. So we have to take f of x minus the g of x. So the two I can compare are going to be these two and these two. I actually can't compare the 3 and the 7 at all because I need to have a 3 or a 7 on both graphs, the points of them, and I don't have them. So I'm going to take at 2, and it's going to stay at 2 then. So I'm going to get 2 and 5 and 2 and 6 is going to become 2 and f minus g. So f is 5 minus g is 6. 5 minus 6 is negative 1. So that's going to be my new point on my graph of y. And then the 4s, I'm going to get 4, comma, f minus g. So 15 minus 30, which is negative 15. 2 and negative 1 is the only one that is there. So it's C. And this is your assignment. We'll be going over this again in class um, when you come back, but it's good to go through it so that you guys get a good handle on it, and then we're going to do some examples in class when you come back.